Genesis 15, verse 16. What does it mean that in iniquity of the Amorites is not complete? What does complete mean? Is God waiting until a certain amount of time has passed or until the iniquity has reached a point where he will no longer allow it to continue? It almost sounds as if the Amorites have the protection of the unseen realm with a prior agreement that they could sin up to a certain point in time. Yeah, I I, I would think that's reading a lot into the uh, the last part there, is reading a lot into the, the passage. There's certainly nothing in this passage or in any other passage that indicates that God sort of just winks at sin or, or you know, apostasy or whatever, like, like there's a quota to fulfill before he gets angry. Um, there's nothing like that. But I, I understand the, the, the trajectory, though. Um, I, I think to start off, it's good to to remind ourselves that Amorites uh, is a generic term uh, in, in some cases, in some contexts, and I, and I would um, make it part of this context uh, relating to giant clans. Uh, I, I wrote about this in Unseen Realm, where there are you know, places in Joshua, like Joshua chapter 7, I think it's around verse 7, referred to the occupants of the land as Amorites. You certainly get that in Amos 2, 9 through 10, referring to the, the those who were you know, driven out, and, and also specifically the ones who were very tall uh, as Amorites. That's important because it's abundantly clear that there are other ethnic groups in the land. You've got Perizzites, Hittites, Hivites, you know, all that, that whole list. Uh, but the Amorites is sort of this this again, in certain contexts, this umbrella term for the giant clans. So I think that that's important to, to sort of have running in the background when we think about this. I actually think there are two options here, neither of which is, is about, again, what I would loosely refer to here just for the sake of the question as sort of a, a sin quota or an evil, evilness, if that's even a word, quota. Uh, option number one, I think the easiest parsing of the comment is that it's an expression that means something like, it's not yet time to punish the Amorites, okay, for, for whatever reason. We wouldn't be given a reason. Not that, hey, they're not quite wicked enough for me to get angry about them. I don't think that's the point. I think it's God has his own uh, you know, reasoning, his own timing, which may factor into the second option here. But I think you know, just looking at it like it's, it's not yet time to punish the Amorites. I, I've, I've not decided yet to act on the Amorites. Now, you could also read it, though, that God's judgment of the Amorites wouldn't necessarily wait until the conquest that we think of under Moses and Joshua, but God was about to initiate it, and it would take a long time. But it would, but Abraham's seed, because since he's talking to Abraham in Genesis 15, Abraham's seed would, would, would be the one, the, the vehicle through which the Amorites would ultimately be judged, but it would occur over a long period of time. So the, the second option, I guess I could put it this way, you could argue that it means the Amorites haven't yet been fully punished for their iniquity or that their punishment is about to be launched and will be in process for a long time. Now, that option would presume, again, as, as I write about an unseen realm uh, in the discussion of Og's bed, that option would presume that Amorite is sort of a, a conceptual play on Babylonian or the, the, the idea that Babylon was the source of, of evil and chaos. And you get there because Mar 2, M A R dot T U in Sumerian, all caps, Mar 2, which was their word for Amorite, it actually, you know, there's a Sumerian term here at, at, at the base of Amorite, is what I'm trying to say here. And Martu is the Sumerian word. Martu in Sumerian vaguely refers to the Aryan population west of Sumer and, you know, and Babylon, sort of that general area. So by since that was the term there, maybe Amorite comes from Martu, and then that links the Amorites to the Babylonian part of the world. And when, when, once you do that, the whole Babylonian complex of ideas in scripture, especially Genesis 1 through 11. So, you know, why is the world, you know, so messed up? Well, there, as I've said many times here, there are three reasons for that. It's the fall, Genesis 6, and then the Babel event. Well, the Genesis 6 event and the Babel event, if anybody's read Unseen Realm, and especially if you've read Reversing Hermon, you know that episodes 2 and 3 are deeply entrenched in this idea of Babylon as the source of everything that is contrary to the way the God of the Bible wants it to be. And, and so there, there, there could be this thing going on with the term Amorite. So you might have this you know, in play, that, that God is about to act, 
they haven't yet been you know punished for their iniquity but hey it's right around the right around the corner in, in terms of you know god's perspective because he's doesn't really care about time but he's going to raise up the mechanism for punishment through abraham and his seed and that's ultimately what happens in the biblical story so now we know to add another layer here we know from deuteronomy 2 and 3 that the punishment of the giant clans was an ongoing process okay involving abraham's descendants Abraham's seed versus the giant clans. We we know that because if we read Deuteronomy 2 and 3, it's the descendants of Esau that were used to get rid of the giants in the Transjordan, at least most of them. You know, Og of Bashan is still left. And of course, Moses and Joshua are going to take care of business there. But in the process, you know, you've had other descendants of Abraham actually being the agents to address the Amorites. And so maybe when, when God, you know, speaks to Abraham in this way, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. You know, he could either be saying sort of a little bit neutrally, hey, it's, it's not yet time to punish them. We're, we'll get to that. Or some idea that, well, they haven't been fully punished yet, you know, for their iniquity, but we're about to start that ball rolling. So one, there's a, there's a bit of a time differential between the two options, but in, in neither case, is it about the Amorites sort of meeting some bar of evilness, you know, some bar of iniquity, so that now they're punishment eligible? They're, they're punishment eligible long before they get what's coming to them. So again, I don't think that's the point. I think that the point is is something about either God's timing or, again, the amount of time, the process through which the Amorites would be judged.